All right. Um, so a few years ago, I wanted to see if it was possible to implement coroutines using C++17. Um, this is the result. The, the entire implementation is around um, 200 lines of code. And I also wrote some test cases, which, I mean, oh, you don't see it. <laughs> OK, so once again, yeah, this is, this is the implementation. And here are the test cases. Um, and apparently, it still runs and works. So, oh, OK, so what you're about to see is some truly horrible code, and I apologize before it, so be prepared. So if we talk about coroutines, we need two things. Coroutine is a function that we can pause and we can resume. Um, there are many ways to implement resume. Here you can see three of them, like um, inlay jump or computed go to. Um, the problem is that none of them is available on MSVC x64, which was the platform that I'm using. So instead, I wrote an assembly procedure that smashes the return address, and this is how I implemented resume. So this assembly procedure simply has a move that moves from the register of the return address to from the register of the argument to the return address, and then it returns. So it essentially jumps. Um, and this is used to, to implement the resume. So when we enter the code in, we first check if we need to resume somewhere, and then we resume to it. Um, but the problem is that after resuming, the compiler may assume that some variables are in the registers, which might not be the case, because we are jumping to an arbitrary instruction. So again, I wrote an empty um, assembly procedure just to force the um, the compiler to reload the, the variables again. And so after yielding, um, we need to call this procedure to, to reload the variables to, to the registers. Then I again abused the return address to find out where we stopped to get the address from where we need to resume to um, by creating a no inline function and using the built-in return address. And now we have a working pause and resume. So we can pause anywhere, store the return address, and when we go back to the function, we can resume to where we stopped. Um, the, the entire um, stack and parameters are all in the vars variable that the, the coroutine takes as parameter. And for making it um, a little bit nicer, I used macros. But another uh, property of coroutines is that we need to manage lifetime. So here, if we yield in the middle and then go back, if we exit the function by returning, the variables will be destroyed, um, which is not good. So um, I created a struct that contains, uh, that will contain all the, the, the variables in the coroutine frame. And then I create, um, I declare a new frame, which inherits from the previous frame, and add another variable so that we can calculate um, the entire, the, the size of all the, the current variables in the coroutine frame. All right, so counter is a struct that recursively inherits from itself, um, and this, um, frame t, we can use this frame macro to get the, the value of the last counter and get the current um, coroutine frame. And then after, um, yeah, and so when we, we, instead of declaring a variable, we need to declare like a new coroutine frame that contains the variable as a data member. And once again, we can wrap it in macros just to make the code a little bit more nicer. Um, we also need a way to find out the, the entire space storage for the coroutine frame. So um, for every variable, we also, um, so the, the coroutine function takes an i template parameter, and we can use it to pass out the storage requirements for each one of the, um, the coroutine frame types. 
And finally, the storage is the maximum of all the, the coroutine uh, frame requirements. Um, we also need some way to clean up, so every frame has functions to, to clean up after himself and destroy the variable and destroy the, the variables of the, the, the frames that it inherits from. And there are two, um, two structs to stop propagation so that it doesn't go all the way and um, destroy variables in, in different scopes. And so we need to add call to the um, lifetime cleaning uh, functions. So once again, I used macros, and this is the code. Uh, finally, you can see an example of how, the how, we how it looks like. I mean, this is pretty disgusting, but it works. Thank you.